Okay, well now let's again suppose that there's a uniform magnetic field that's going into the board, and let's say the magnetic field is everywhere on the board, but here's a loop of wire. The wire has the same dimensions and the same resistance as before. Um, but now, um, I'm just giving you a formula for the magnetic field. The magnetic field is 5 minus 3t. Um, t here stands for time. Well, notice that this tells us that this is a case with a changing magnetic field, because the magnetic field here depends on the time. Okay. Um, so, let's see. The first thing we have to do is get an expression for the magnetic flux. Well, again, the magnetic field is going to be uniform. So we can use this expression. And again, what can we say about the component of V that's perpendicular to the surface? Um, it's equal to V. Yeah, the entire V is perpendicular to the surface. So we can just use the entire magnetic field. So we've accomplished our first step. We've gotten an expression for the magnetic flux. Um, so what do we do next? After we've gotten an expression for the magnetic flux, then we take the derivative. Well, what's the first thing we can do to simplify this expression? Um, because the A here is a constant. Good. Then what? So let's write down what we get at that point. Um, let's talk about that a little bit more. So you're using this expression over here. Now, the big thing that we have to distinguish between is we have to distinguish between the function b and the derivative of b. This expression here doesn't tell us the derivative of b. It only tells you the level of b. A good way to write this would be... We really should have written this like this. This is saying that b is a function of t. But this doesn't depend on b. It depends on the derivative of b. So, by the way, so um, at this, up, even though calculus is a prerequisite for this course, we've been able to get through almost the whole course with hardly any calculus. But this is a one subject where you can't get by without calculus because the derivative is built right into Faraday's law. So we're going to have to do some simple derivatives in order to do these problems. So we actually have to take this derivative. Do you know what this derivative is? Isn't it just negative 3? That's right. All right, so one thing you might want to do is go back and review how to take simple derivatives, because you might have to do that on the exam, but it's good that you knew how to take this one. All right, so what should I plug in for the derivative of b with respect to t? Negative 3. Right. We should not plug in 5 minus 3t, because this is not b, it's the derivative of b. Okay, and uh, what should I plug in for a? Um, 8. Yeah, that we're not taking a derivative of, because that's not changing. Um, okay, good. Although, um, again, we're just focusing on taking magnitudes. So I'm just going to plug in 3 here. Um, we're just going to try to find magnitudes here. So I'll just plug in the number 3. Am I getting the same thing as last time? I didn't do that on purpose. All right. So uh, that will give us this. So we have this derivative is 24. Okay. Um, you know that that's equal to the induced voltage? Yeah, that tells us the magnitude of the induced voltage would be 24 volts. Good. Mm -hmm. um, and we can use that and the resistance on the wire to find the current? Good. So I think this will be the same as before. 24 equals I times, uh, I still was saying, 5 ohm resistor. So I guess the current would still be 
4.8 ohms. Mm -hmm. Good. And then on the direction, um, so we know that. So we want to use our lenses law. So I thought you can, uh, if, you, if you need to, you can uh, check out what it says about lenses law in this part of the flow chart. So what do we need to do first? We need to find out whether the flux is increasing or decreasing. Right. That's right. How do we know? Um, because as time increases, the function of B, B, of B gets more negative. That's right. That's good. So you can just figure it out from this expression here. Mm -hmm. um, the most straightforward way to figure it out, though, is from the derivative. The derivative is negative, which tells us that the magnetic field must be decreasing. Okay. Um, in some cases, it might not be obvious looking at this, whether it's increasing or decreasing. So we can use the derivative. I only plugged in the magnitude of the derivative over here, but the sign of the derivative tells us what's happening to the flux. So we know that, we know that we're getting less and less magnetic field because of this negative derivative. All right, so what do we need to figure out next, uh, for step two here for using Lenz's law? Um. Now we have to figure out what does the induced magnetic field have to be to oppose this. All right, this is a little bit subtle, so we should really take our time and think about this. Um, the magnetic field is into the page, but it's getting less and less into the page. We have a magnetic field, a magnetic flux into the page that's getting less and less into the page. So what direction should the induced field be in to oppose this change in the flux? Should it be in the page or out of the page? Into the page. Got an X or a dot. Yeah, we had a magnetic flux into the page, but now we have less magnetic flux into the page. Well, we need to go back to having more magnetic flux into the page by having this be an X. This is kind of subtle because I think students could easily make a mistake here. We know Lenz's law says that the induced field is supposed to oppose the change in the flux, but that does not mean that this direction is always the opposite of this direction. I think it would be tempting to say, well, gee, since this is an x and since we want to oppose it, this should be a dot. But we don't want to oppose the level of the flux. We want to oppose the change in the flux. Well, the flux is actually changing to being less into the page. So we can oppose that, uh, oppose that by having something that's more into the page. I think that's pretty subtle to work through, though, so I just tried to just write it down by brute force as well. If the flux is increasing, then the induced field is opposite to um, the uh, external field. But if the flux is decreasing, then the induced field should be the same as the external field. Well, that's that second case that we have here. We have that the flux is decreasing, um, and just using that mechanical rule then, we know that the induced field should be in the same direction as the external field. Um, so it's good to try to figure this out intuitively, but maybe in your cheat sheet you should also just copy uh, what I have here just to give you a mechanical way to go from this row to this row because it's easy to get confused. Okay, very good, and now we're ready for step three. I should erase these arrows because those are the arrows from the previous problem that we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So which point on the wire are you going to pick? Left, right, top, or bottom? Right. So we can pick this point on the wire. Okay. Good. And we know that the field is going into the board, so I put my finger pads into the board and point my hands toward the magnetic field. Right. Um, and the, the current is going down in the negative y direction. Good. So uh, let's see here. We've got. Here's our thumb for the wire, and our fingers should be to the left of the wire, and then the finger pads, oh, well, yeah, where our fingers should be to the left of the wire, and we want our finger pads pointing into the page, so then this would be pointing down. All right, so um, what do we get for the induced current, clockwise or counterclockwise? Um, it's clockwise. 
Good. All right. Um, so what's the answer to the question? Um, the current is 4.8, and it's going in the negative y, or it's going in the clockwise direction. Or oh, I keep using the wrong units, too. Make lots of mistakes. Current is 4.8 amps. Um, and what did you say about the direction? It's moving in a clockwise direction. That's right, moving clockwise. Um, and then if they told us that this was the positive direction, then the voltage would be positive. And if they told us this was the negative direction, the voltage would be negative. In many cases, they might not ask you for that. <laughs>